The original DJI mic was a game changer last year. Literally everyone was using this mic kit to make content. But then in August, Rode came in and disrupted the crown with the Rode Wireless Pro, offering 32-bit flow audio recording and an easy to use hybrid mic system. Then just a few days ago, DJI responded to that with the DJI Mic 2. Two systems with very similar features and a very similar price point. So which one should you get? Let me explain. What's up nerds, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already watched my full review of the DJI Mic 2, make sure you watch that video before this or just at some point because it'll give you a fair amount of context that I'm not gonna go over twice in this video. Also, this is my first time having multi-cam A-roll set up because this is connected to my a7 IV and this is connected to my FX30. So that way I can kind of swap back and forth and have both mics going internally at the same time. I'm also recording 32-bit flow internally on both of these. Real quick, this video is not sponsored by DJI or Rode. I actually purchased the Rode system myself when it first came out and then a few months later they sent me a kit to test out and DJI did send me this mic set to check out but nobody changed hands and they don't get to review this video before it goes out. So starting with the DJI kit you get a travel pouch, a charging case, two transmitters, one receiver, two windscreens, a USB-C cable, a 3.5 millimeter cable and then a lightning and USB-C adapter for smartphones. And within the Rode system you get a charging case, an accessory case, two transmitters, one receiver, a USB-C to USB-C, a USB-C to lightning, a USB-C data slash charging cable, three windscreens, so you get an extra one compared to the DJI. You also get two of their pro lavalier microphones as well as windscreens and labels for them. And you get the magnetic support as well as a 3.5 millimeter coiled cable to go to your camera. The Rode kit is retailing for 399 US dollars. People have been having a hard time getting a hold of this kit because it's been out of stock in a lot of places. But as of recording this video, it is in stock on B&H Photo. So if you want to pick up this kit, I do have links in the description to both kits, but it is in stock on B&H right now. The DJI system is retailing for 349 US dollars, but I'm assuming this is going to go out of stock pretty quick, depending on how popular it is. So now let's talk about functionality and support. As far as design within the Rode system, the size is still the same as their other Rode Wireless Go 2 and Rode Wireless Go. But they have made some updates to the actual logo itself. So now instead of that bright gold logo, you now kind of have this matte finish logo and it's more simplified just kind of having that O on it just seems a little bit more discreet to me. The receiver also looks exactly like the transmitters which could be a pro or a con depending on how you're feeling. There is no travel bag. You do have the two cases that come with it that charging case and the accessory case but these are kind of like wonky dimensions. So what I'm actually looking into doing is taking that accessory case and putting all the accessories into like a porter brace pouch sort of thing and then just tossing that accessory case. I think that'll make things a little bit more travel friendly within that kit. But I do think that the charging case is well designed and it's multi-purpose, which I'll get into. On both of the transmitters, you also have a screw on 3.5 millimeter jack for lavaliers or other accessories. I would have also loved to see that feature on the receiver, but it is just a normal 3.5 jack. For the DJI system, it is a much smaller size. It's about half the size of the Rode mic itself. Just seems a little bit more sleek and feels more ergonomic in my opinion. I've already expressed compared to the previous model, the transmitter design is a little bit of a downgrade. They've added this glossy finish to it and a big bright white logo to the front. This has been expressed on multiple channels from multiple different perspectives and I wonder what DJI will say or do about it, honestly. Compared to the Rode, the receiver navigation is pretty simple and user intuitive. The Rode system doesn't really give you a guide of like how to use it, but that touchscreen on the DJI makes things a little bit more user intuitive. But that is your only source of like changing settings or anything like that. I think the DJI case and travel bag are perfect. It carries all of your accessories. The charging case is a nice upgrade, has that locking mechanism now. Just a really well thought out design as far as travel and use case. I did also notice that there's a headphone jack on the receiver for the DJI. The Rode does not have that. So if you wanted to just have the receiver independently to monitor levels or systems or something like that, you can do that with that headphone output. But with the Rode system, you're kind of stuck with the USB-C output or the regular 3.5 output. All right, let's talk about computers. For the Rode to transfer files and manage the settings, you can do that within the computer and you can just keep them in the charging case. The charging case will connect via USB-C and pull up within the Rode Central app. And that app is really well designed and put together. You can access every single setting. You can change the 32-bit float. You can change the gain. You can change everything within your desktop or laptop. But as soon as you get away from that, the 
only thing you can change on the receiver is the gain and the gain setting. So like how it outputs itself. You can also do software updates within that app and it's a seamless process. Rode even suggests it's like, hey, we've got a new update. Do you want to download it? I'm like, yeah, go for it. You can also connect these to other Rode accessories like the Rodecaster Pro 2 or the Rodecaster Duo. So if you're doing like a podcast or live shows, that's crazy helpful. The DJI kit does lack quite a bit in this category. You can only access files and update software when it's connected to the computer. And you can't connect these devices within the case. You have to use the USB-C inputs on the side of each accessory, meaning both transmitters and receiver, you have to plug them in, unplug them to access the files or to give updates. There is no desktop or mobile app to adjust anything within these, so you're stuck using the receiver. But honestly, as far as computer integration, that's about it. For the menu and settings, I kind of already went through this with the road, but you can only change the gain and the gain adjustment as well as the volume from the road. You can also add markers from the receiver, which is kind of cool. If you're in post-production, you're like, oh, I want to keep that or that's a good take. You just hit the marker and it'll show up in your timeline on your editing software. And then you can just edit from there. It makes things a little bit easier in post-production. The road system also features time code. So if you'd rather match it up using time code, be a little bit more accurate than just matching via the waveforms that is available on the road system and is not available on the DJI system. The DJI does have that simple menu navigation on the receiver, and that'll give you access to everything you need to change settings on the receiver, as well as the transmitters. The DJI also features that AI noise canceling and it has Bluetooth connectivity to smartphones. As far as accessories, the road system really takes it here. For the price, you get a lot of stuff. As far as the DJI system, there is a lack of accessories, but that does keep this system very simple and user intuitive, which gears towards the target audience, which is beginners out there. For battery life, the road system, you'll get seven hours per transmitter. And with the case, you can get an additional 14 hours on top of that. So 21 hours overall. For the DJI system, you'll get six hours per transmitter and 18 hours in total using the case. So now what you've all been waiting for, audio quality. Both of these systems do feature 32-bit flow internal recording and then 24-bit within the camera. But as far as record time, the Rode system will give you 40 hours of 32-bit internal recording per transmitter. That will literally double outlast your battery. It's pretty rare that you would have to format this thing unless you're doing like a 40-hour shoot. I don't know. What, when the heck would you be doing that? And then you can get 44 hours of 24-bit internal recording, which is just insane to me. There is so much recording storage in this system. Now the DJI system is much less. Their marketing is a little bit deceitful because right above the 32-bit audio, they'll put 14 hours of internal recording. That's false. If you're recording 32-bit internal, you're only gonna get 11.2 hours of internal recording. And then you can get 14 hours of 24-bit internal recording. So you get significantly less run time compared to the road system, but it is smaller. So it's understandable. Is it 30 hours less? Maybe not, but it's, you know, it is smaller. So when you record audio with these systems connected to the camera or internally, there is a chance that the internal clock may have a delay, meaning after recording for a significant amount of time, it's possible that each mic could get kind of out of sync. And that happened to me when I was recording my review of the DJI Mic 2. My internal recordings did get out of sync just a little bit from the camera recording. And it was maybe by like, like four or five frames. And I've never had that happen with the Rode system. When it's connected to the camera, it is basically dead on. It, that internal clock is really, really good. If you wanna see a really good test of this, I'd recommend checking out Potato Jet's video. He did it where he ran them for like several hours and he kind of shows you the differences, but the road system when connected to the camera was like dead on. And when it's not connected to the camera, it was off by maybe two or three frames after like a couple of hours. But I do think that the internal clock is much better in the road system versus the DJI. So now let's do some quick audio tests. I did not come prepared with an internal monologue. <laughs> Here I got it, I'll, I'll read this. So to compare the audio quality, I will be doing a test reading the lyrics of a random song that I found on the internet. This is the Rode system, 32-bit flow, internal recording. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Now this is the DJI system, 32-bit flow, internal recording. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. And now the road kit with the 24 bit in the camera. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. 
She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. And now this is the DJI mic 24-bit in the camera. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Now that's the raw audio from each of these systems. This is the raw audio right now. I think the raw recording overall is much better in the Rode system. There seems to be a lot more low end. It just seems crisp and clear. Whereas with the DJI system, I always feel like it's lacking something. I kind of just play with my levels a little bit until it starts to sound a little bit clearer, but the highs I tend to have to bring up quite a bit. And then the lows I'll either subtract or add to depending on, depending on who Who's talking but with my voice specifically that's what I have to do usually but to be honest after doing a little bit of mixing I can get these systems to sound pretty similar and to be a little frank I don't think anyone cares about the AI features in the DJI mic they're useful in a fair amount of situations but I personally would rather take care of those background noise reduction or voice enhancer type of stuff in post-production and get the clearest sound possible without having to mess with things with that AI presets or whatever that DJI is doing in their system I don't want to take up any more of your time so for the extra accessories, the computer integration, the slightly less distracting design, in my opinion, the road is worth the extra $50. If size is a concern and you're already using a lot of DJI products like the DJI Osmo or the Ronin, and in that situation, you should probably stick with DJI and go with this system. I really think it just depends on what you want to do and what your needs are. In my case, I love using this road interview handle. I use it for YouTube videos, for short form content, for my full-time job. And yes, you can fit the DJI mic on this system as well, but might as well stay cohesive with the Rode. I genuinely do think that the raw audio from the Rode system sounds significantly better. Even when I was just kind of using the DJI mic in my workflow for a couple of weeks, I noticed that I was adjusting a lot of things with my presets that I already had for the Rode. And that kind of makes sense, but I was adjusting a lot of like weird things. Again, like boosting those highs way more than I normally do with the Rode system, and then really messing around with the compression to get it sounding a lot more powerful than what I normally do with the Rode kit. I guess what I'm saying is just there was more work for me to do with the DJI mic in post-production than there was with the Rode mic. I forgot to do this real quick. I also think that when the mic systems are clipped on my shirt like this, the Rode sounds just a teensy bit better to me. Again, I don't love having these here. I would much rather pull out the lapel mic for this, clip it to a shirt, clip it to a collar or something like that, or even just hold it handheld. But when I do have to use the mics in these situations, I would prefer the Rode. So to sum it up in my overall humble opinion, I purchased the DJI OG kit last year with my own money and used it constantly. But the second that the Rode Wireless Pro came out, it immediately replaced that kit. And I thought for a second the DJI system would replace that kit, but given that this has time code, it has more accessories, better sound quality in my opinion, this is the system that I will continue using, unless something drastic changes. But if you're interested in either of these kits, links are in the description to both of them. Like I said, at the recording of this video, the Rode system was back in stock on B&H. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you never miss out on new young filmmaker content. Good luck filmmaking.